So what we're saying is, from a digital standpoint, you have a right to agency over the digital representation of your personhood. And that is unprecedented. And so what we're hoping to do in the U.S. from a policy standpoint is build on what you have with the GDPR to give people an outright right to ownership because we think it's good for markets. So people can say, as this bucket of data exists company by company, individual by individual, we can start to see it trade in the markets, we can start to see it scale, and we can start to see it actually indemnify people, you know, pay people's, for them to eat, pay for people's, you know, housing, their health care, their education, you name it. Um, when we think about how to include people in the economy, I think in the, in the near future, not the far future, it'll be a result of how we understand the evidence, which is data, of their participation in the economy. Um, and so we'll have all sorts of new interesting arguments, arguments around discrimination, especially from a gender standpoint, yeah, from an ethnic standpoint, from a geolocation standpoint, from an economic standpoint, you name it, or based on whatever food you eat. So, um, so we differ in that you all have the law and we don't. But I think the next biggest difference is um, uh, Americans are, I think, uh, just per our legislative history and our litigative history, are more prone to want to negotiate about the value of, of anything, any asset. Learn more about how your data is labor at dataslabor.com. Follow the podcast or get the book.